Hey, what's up, guys? Happy Friday. Man, it's cold in Arizona again today. <laughs> I know it's cold other places, but I'm just saying, it's cold over here for the desert. It's been raining lately. But we made it another week. I hope you spent some time with God today. You prayed. You're on your way to the gym. Got your food packed. All your first wins are won. Friday, you know, Friday, I look at how <clears throat> I used to remember my Fridays like as a kid and like as an adult and then into like now who I am today. And when I was like deep in my addiction, uh, Friday would be coming up and I, I would want to leave work early, obviously, like around 10 so I could start to drink. And, you know, I would stop get two cases of uh, Heineken, two packs of Newports, um, some rolling papers, and then I would go get some weed and some Coke. And I would have pain pills on, on standby just if I needed to come down fast. You know, but I would plan it all out. And as soon as I would get home, I would feel... Like, I deserve to, to get drunk and get high, you know, for Friday, all all night Friday and into the morning Saturday. Because I had worked out all, all week. I had put, you know, food on the table. And um, I guess you could say up to a certain place, I was a functioning addict. But I, I felt like I deserved it, you know. It was it was normal. So I would I would do it. When I was younger, you know, Fridays was a tradition because, you know, we would all rush to the mall. All the guys on 59th would rush to the mall, Riverside or Fort City, and, and we would buy whatever outfit we were wearing that night. And uh, it, it usually it was, uh, you know, a fight. Something would happen because it would be Friday. Everybody would be out, so all the gangs would be out. So it was always a fight. And I was remembering the other day, there was a there was an incident on on gangland where the same disciples killed uh, Gizmo in the alley, and this is how crazy my story is and everything. Because even to that on gangland, that story, my story, still connected to to them because I knew I knew most of them. You know, I knew Gizmo, I knew Little Mars, I knew most of them. Um, we were, at the time, I was living right in front of the front building with Val, um, when they killed Gizmo that night. I'm trying to remember if it was a Friday, but that day, we were at the mall shopping to, to wear something for that night, and... We got into a, a huge fight with some Ambrose, and we ended up getting locked up at the police station on 63rd. Um, and, it, and and the reason why I brought that up is that, like, you know, I I would uh, I would see that on TV when I was doing time, and I would be like, wow, you know, I was I was right there, because uh, the next day when we got released, you know, that news was that news was like throwing like a bomb and a and a whole organization that just was very and I, I remember in those years the SDs were like in their golden years they were there was just hoods popping up everywhere like you know 59th started Cicero and all this started from a chain reaction of a lot of the SDs that were in Kaminsky on Kaminsky on 26th Street moved moved out of the neighborhood because of the big war that, that happened with the 2-6 and, and everything. And I don't know the details about that, like, specifically. I just know the people that were involved in it, and they were my my OGs. Like, they were the ones that taught me. Um, when all those SDs from Kaminsky moved out, uh, you know, 59th was brought to life, uh, Cicero, um... There was a lot of hoods that opened up of uh, uh, 50th, uh, you know, it, it was hoods everywhere. And 
Bolingbrook. I moved out to Bolingbrook and I started a branch out in Bolingbrook. Uh, I mean, we were pretty deep in Bolingbrook. It was all white boys, but we, we were deep. And, you know, I guess you could say the, the structure of it was that on Fridays, and Saturdays, like when we were out, we were all we were all cruise to everybody's neighborhood, and they would do the same, almost like giving each other, I guess, security. But what what I was getting on this is that like Fridays were like had always been chaotic for me, always. Like I'm telling you, like Fridays would be, everybody would go crazy, and, and since we didn't work, we got up Fridays thinking it was party. As soon as we woke up, so we would be cruising from 59 and Western to, to Cermak and back up and looking for trouble, you know, trying to catch the uh, uh, high school getting out, you know, because that's that's how old we were back then. And and just, you know, uh, uh, to see how my story, like, connected to all these stories was it's crazy because even me, even me just being an SD, like, and then I ended up being the king. Like, you know, and I didn't, I didn't pick none of that stuff, man. I, I was as lost as everyone else. And it's crazy because I was looking for some kind of, like, I guess you could say authority figure in my life or, or it's just, I was just hungry. And, and you know, I, I know, I know that I like, I'll talk about one thing and then it goes into another, but it's just cause I, like, I'm just, this is not rehearsed. This is like, this is straight from the heart. This is just, like I said, this is just raw, uncut. Like I'm not editing this stuff because I just, I wanted to be real. And so like, Me sharing, like, you don't understand. Like, when I turned to King from being an SD my whole life, like, like I grew I grew up with these guys. They, they, I can't lie and say that they weren't there sometimes. They were there sometimes. They, they took care of me. They took me in. They fed me. Like, a, a, a lot of them did look out for me. A lot of them. Um, was I annoying? Was I, like? Just hard to be around and handle. Yeah, I mean, you could ask anybody. I mean, I was I was a problem child. I was I wasn't right. That's why I was always on the streets, you know. And but how everything started to change, like when money came into the picture, like as kids, we were like, we did everything together, you know, everything. We cried everything. But as we grew up and money came into the picture, uh, every it started to change everything. People started getting greedy. People started changing. Boys started robbing boys. Like, it, it was crazy. Like, you know, killing for money. And things get really ugly in Chicago when it comes to, like, money and drugs and stuff like that. It, it's, uh... I mean, you guys seen it on Gangland. You seen what that what that dude did to to Little Mars, like with the samurai knife, and 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 you know chopped him up. And I and I'm like, man, like that's crazy because like people would do some crazy ass stuff for for money, for greed, for drugs, like you know. Um, and I can't sit here and lie and say that I never like tried to like rob somebody or something like that because like I I I have and I and I did and. You know, I had to try and do whatever I could to survive. And it's crazy because, like, I had all the wrong teachers in my life. You know, I had a lot of, and I don't, I don't want to say bad people. It was just people that were just as lost as me. You know, um, I don't think nobody's born bad. I, I just I just think that, you know, they have the wrong teachers in their life. And that, that was like big for me because you know um I guess you could say from my dad leaving 
my mom and le leaving her like that. Like, I didn't respect him at all, so I didn't listen to whatever he had to say. Um, so by the time he was trying to, like, tame me, it was already too late. Uh, um, I was already... I was just uncontrollable. Like, you couldn't tell me what to, what to do. Um, if you did, I would be jumping out of windows, all, all kinds of stuff to get away. And I would disappear. I would run away for, for days. So, I became like a street kid. I was always on the streets running around. My grandparents were always trying to chase me around, trying to, like, my grandma was. <laughs> she would jump out when all the gang members were there. <laughs> she wasn't afraid and <laughs> tell me to get in the car. And... <sighs> you know, there's, there's there's not too many things that I would change about my past just because it made me the man that I am today. But one thing that does weigh on me is is how much my, my grandma worried about me. You know, how much she... She tried, you know, she tried. They, 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 they tried and they did what they could do. And, um, and that was like, you know, jumping out on me in front of everybody and not caring. They weren't afraid and they would tell me to get in the car. And, um, it was, it was something that I didn't see because I was so young and, um, I didn't realize that that's how she was showing me she loved me, you know? So Fridays. Friday was the theme of this video before we went berserk and went all over the place. <laughs> so every Friday was chaotic. Today, man, my Fridays look like this. I come to the gym. I'm done by 10... 10.30. Um, I usually go up to one of the prisons. If it's not Lewis, it's uh, the other men's prison on, on uh, in Buckeye. Um, today's our date night for me and my wife. So today we usually order pizza and chicken wings. And that's our like cheat meal. But yesterday we had in and out, so I don't know if we're gonna we're gonna cheat today. Uh, we cheat once a week, and and you know, and I'm I'm not, and that's what a lot of people don't understand. Like when I tell people to to jump on my program, um, it, it's not that you have to be like bodybuilding ready. Like it's whatever it is that you want to do, however healthy you want to do. I just guide you to get you there, you know. And it's 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 a lot cheaper than paying. Uh, a coach per hour you're paying by the month it's 250 so it's like you sign up and you get all your stuff your videos everything that you have to do your food everything and once a week we zoom just to go over your problems but like i said it's for you just to be healthy like the main thing is is your health and longevity it's not about how much you can bench this Trust me, like, it's about doing this long term. And this is things that I learned in prison because uh, in prison <laughs> is where I seen some of the people that were the fittest naturally with the less amount of food that you think possible, less amount of nutrients, just everything. And they took care of themselves to the point where these dudes look like they're in their 20s and they're already seniors you know what i mean so like longevity and that has to do with food sleep stress everything as especially as males because all that affects our testosterone all that affects our mood all that affects our sex drive just everything in general so it has to be properly aligned for it to work the way it's supposed to work man See, my words, my vocabulary is getting better. <laughs> Fridays. Why do I keep going off a topic? <laughs> I'm in a good mood today, man. Yesterday was, it was really cool to see the girls at the prison. Um, you know, we have, you know, issues here and there, but it's, it's, it's little stuff that a lot of the girls 
have to deal with and 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 this is for a lot of people who are incarcerated they don't know how to control their emotions and they have a lot of anger they have a lot of you know hurt sadness and they don't know how to control it so they they lash out they don't they don't want to listen to rules so it, and i get it because that was me that's what i tell the girls is that get, you, they don't understand like that is me right there sitting down with them and I understand them 110%. So it's why I enjoy going there, like checking up on them, asking them how they're doing and, and, and just showing them that we, we care, you know. Um, so yeah, that's why I'm in a good mood. <laughs> so Fridays. What are you going to do on Fridays? Usually every video that I've been trying to do, I talk about fitness. I talk about something motivational. Let me see. Did I cover all the bases? Maybe a gang story. I already did that. <laughs> um, what else? I guess we could do something motivational now. You know, a lot of men don't like don't like to ask for help because they believe that it's it's showing weakness. And I used to be that that man. I used to be that male that you couldn't tell me to reach for that life life preservative because uh I didn't need your help because I, I lived such a rough life. Uh, what were you going to teach me? What were you going to show me? Um, uh, I don't I don't need your help. And that's how I was and that's how what I thought. But the, the I was so wrong because it's how I was looking at it. It, it wasn't how I was like when you ask for help is because you're still not ready to give up. Like, you still have more left in you. And um, I was looking at it the wrong way. I was looking at it completely the wrong way because now it's like, I ask for help all the time, you know, especially with like my senior, because I have seniors in, in our, so in our group, the wrong is strong, like, I got it, I got, I call it the growth group, uh, Omar, Dean, everybody that's in Chicago, Texas, everywhere, we have a small group from men all over the world that meet every Friday for Bible study, and we have seniors that pretty much keep us in line with knowledge, and we have people in the middle, we have, um, people that are beginners, and people that are actually non-believers that just sit and listen because, you know, we share, we share transformations, we share information, we share, you know, hope, we share scripture. It's just a bunch of men opening up, you know, struggles. Uh, and, and this is, this is, uh, this has been happening. Uh, I think we started it, I want to say we're going on a year now, but, um, it's grown to the point where we have quite a few men on there from, from everywhere. And it, it's been a blessing just to be able to connect with different men from different backgrounds, different stories, and just different hopes. And and that's what I, I kind of look at, like, the Friday Night Bible like study. And I'll leave the link in the descriptions, but it's it's that call to help. It's that red phone, like bat, the Batman phone to God. Like, it's... And this is the best part that it's it's free. <laughs> and like I was telling I was telling the girls yesterday, like I'm not perfect. Like I one of the biggest things that I struggle with is my anger. I, I start to get in my feelings sometimes, especially like when I do interviews and stuff like that, and they try to get me to either talk bad about like one of my friends or, or, or stuff like that. I start getting <laughs> in my feelings and I start getting mad. But you know, it's a constant struggle because, like, every day I ask God to, like, work on me a little bit more because I know he's not going to leave nothing undone that he started. And I know he started something in me November 6, 2021. Um, no one could tell me 
what I felt that day, what I experienced, because I know, I know for a fact that I got a heart transplant that day. And I'm just going to keep trying to do better. And like I said, you know, alignment is everything. Like today, I'm not, I'm not, and this is just because I, I'm honest and, and raw about it. Today, I woke up, I prayed, and I came into the gym, and I didn't, I didn't, I didn't read today. I'm gonna be honest, cause I I slept in a little bit, so I, I prayed. I got here, and yesterday, I swore. I think I slept about three times, and I said to myself this morning, I was like, you know, I, I asked for forgiveness, and I was like, Lord, like. Just work on me more like I, I need you more and in my head right away you know I told myself you know what to do like you need to sit down and read and make time even if you don't have time and and it's true like I can't use me as an excuse being late to work because I want to sleep in and then say oh you know I'm gonna start talking now again with profanity you know it, it doesn't work like that and I have to be honest with myself about it why because i am a believer and i am a, a follower and i have to do my part so i said to myself you know what you need to do you know what you need to do and and yeah like even even in my house like i was telling my wife we need to spend some time reading a little bit more scripture together and watching less tv together and it, it's it's stuff that um as a believer, a follower, a role model, a male, a man of God. I mean, I could go on and on and on. As head of the house, these are things that are an obligation. Like a soldier trains like an athlete and like a farmer. And I, I take that to heart, man. Especially for after the life that I've lived and what he's done in my life and what he continues to do right now. The doors opening up and, and so many. Yesterday, all the girls wrote us letters about what the program is doing for them and you know sometimes I don't realize that me being just like them impacts them so much and um that's what God is doing he's he's showing them that you know God is the way and how he can help them become better so that being said it is Friday like I said I hope you spend some time in prayer, you talk to God, you ask him for forgiveness, you know how, and you feel that gratefulness every day and know just, man, gratitude goes a long way, especially when you feel it every day and even if it makes you emotional, that's even stronger. But man, just try every day just to do a little bit better. It's, a, it's, not, a, it's not a sprint, it's not a race, it's, it's a walk. And the more you enjoy it, the, the more you learn to live how God wants you to live, not this world. My name's JC. I am Wrong to Strong, and this is my AM Real Talk all over the place. I hope you enjoyed my shenanigans. I love you guys. Catching the rebound.